We're going to be looking for a few people, okay. and uh, James Giro is one of them. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, and because we've got some awards to give tonight. Uh, okay, and who else? Give me another one. Um, we've got, well, we've got James Giro, and we've got um, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy Barrett, if she's here. Jessica Tanner would be a great person to find. Okay. So um, welcome here, thank you, to Channel 17. Selrose, we would like to get a shot of the, of the whole party. Demir will help you. You see, that's the good news. Here at Channel 17 and CCTV, we all help each other. And we're having our holiday party and we're gonna be celebrating. We're on live, we're gonna, we've got some new community producers. We're gonna be, yeah, I want some people, yep. Um, we're gonna be celebrating, hi. How are you? Hi, Allison. <laughs> Hi, Allison. Nice to see you. Why are you here tonight? Um, because I was having a play date with your daughter, and... Hi! Are you I having fun? Or, are there a lot of people? Yes. Do you want to be a camera person? Yes. Well, here at Channel 17, you can be a camera person. Isn't that pretty exciting? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to uh, tell people about what we're doing here. We're having the holiday party. We're starting our 25th anniversary celebration, 25 years. How old are you? I'm eight years old. Oh my gosh. Eight, didn't you turn nine? Yeah. yeah, so we've been in operation for 25 years, which is kind of exciting. And uh, I would have to say that the first, the first um, project that I ever really undertook was this CCTV and then Stella Rose my daughter is the second project that I ever undertook and I'm going to interview Jonathan now because he's a, usually a community producer um, he's usually behind the camera so would you go ask him the man in the green shirt to come on over one in the green shirt right there now um, we're going to be showing some video and we're going to be giving out some awards but first I'd like to interview Jonathan come on over Jonathan how are you Happy holidays. Happy, ho happy holidays, and uh, it's nice to be here, and uh, hope you all enjoy your new year and all that good stuff. Now, usually on Thursday nights, you're behind the camera, aren't you? Right, and I run the production booth, and I volunteer on Thursday night for five years on the live TV show, but tonight I'm enjoying the holiday party, and Rob is running the camera instead of, running in, instead of uh, <coughs> helping out in the production booth and everything. And what to you is that five years, I mean, that, I, I had even really, I feel, feel like you've been here for absolutely forever. So tell me, why do you keep coming back week after week? Because I like volunteering, I like looking at the shows, and I like learning all about the, what the Republicans are doing on city council and different shows. And you um, actually, that one of the shows on Thursday nights is the Republican show, right? Right, I do the, Rep I do the Republican show, and I like learning about uh, the different challenges of the school and stuff. Uh, the Burlington schools and the hard challenges they face for education and stuff. And so I have fun, and uh, it's nice to be here and see everybody. I'm so glad that you join us. It really makes a huge difference. And if you had one wish for the future of public access, what would it be? That I could get a TV that was like, that I could get um, that I could get hooked up to Burlington Telecom, so I could actually watch the nice programming on this TV because I'm not able to get the channel at home and I can't watch it. Pretty soon, Burlington Telecom's coming to your house, isn't it? Yeah, if we, we, we'll be able to sign. Uh, um, I'm hoping we get uh, my, the parent owners at uh, the house I live at to sign up for it so I can watch all the nice programming on TV. Well, I'm looking forward to that, too. Thanks for joining me. So one of the things that I just wanted to uh, let folks know is that one of the people that one of the people that um, we just gave an award to, but he had to go, was Bill Aswad. And Bill Aswad has been making Rhodes Scholars for many, 14 years, 14 years. But this is not Bill Aswad, this is Rob Chapman. Rob, Rob runs VCAM Channel 15, thanks for joining us. Sure, it's a great pleasure to be here, thanks for having the party. Now we um, had a meeting before this about the future of our communications network and how was that meeting for you? I enjoy talking about this stuff, I, you know, I live it every day and trying to figure out what community media means in this world and how we uh, adapt to the changes that are happening in the telecommunica telecommunications industry. Um, so it was a pleasure to sit and talk for 90 minutes with a group of uh, really talented and uh, wise people as to what we can do to make sure that community media survives past these convergences of all these different technologies and stuff like that. And um, what's your hope for the future of community access? Uh, well, I hope that it's vibrant. And I hope that it is, uh, uh, well, active. 
I hope that it's never lost. I mean, it's just, it, 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 there's a real threat, I think, in, in the regulatory structure being based on certain elements of, of the fact that, you know, if the cable industry is based on the right of ways of the lines on the telephone poles, uh, the phone companies were regulated in the 30s and 20s and uh, based on, you know, antiquated ideas. So the ability to adapt to that is an important thing, and I think that we're going to really need to encourage our leaders and our communities to understand the implications and, and ensure that, that every citizen has access to the ability to talk to their other members of their community. And that's an important aspect that we can't, cannot lose, and I'm afraid that it might happen. Well, I think you need to be commended because you've kept Channel 15 as an open forum for just about any kind of speech you can imagine. It really is, and you can notice that every time you watch it. So I hope people are watching it, and I hope people will consider coming down and producing their own public access show and telling their own communi uh, communities what they think about what's happening in their lives or what's happening in their community. Thank you so much. You, Happy holidays. So Rob Chapman is um, one of the real great leaders in our statewide network. And next we have Jody Harrington. Jody is a community producer and a community leader. A community leader. You are. Thank you. You, um, you know that the Winiski City Council is the highest rated program of 2008 on Channel 17. Oh, I'm thrilled to hear that. It's, I'm, I'm sure we have been. It's been kind of a wild and woolly ride. And I have to say, though, people have gotten a lot of information. And we have a, a most amazing community of uh, pe people who have stepped up in our community to work with us on our budget. And I think part of that probably is is all the exposure. I mean, sometimes things have to blow up. And now uh, we're rebuilding. And we have six or seven people who are really qualified helping the city council create our new budget, including the chairman of the school board and our treasurer of the school board. and. Of course, George Cross, who has been superintendent and representative in, in Montpelier for a long time, is acting city manager. And I think we really feel like we're, uh, we're fixing things on a deep level and moving forward. And we've really got a transparency and an energy to go forward that's, that's pretty remarkable. It was, it was hard. It's been hard for all of us on whatever one's opinion is. It's been a very exhausting um, and hard work, and I certainly, getting elected in March and stepping right into it from uh, my first meeting was when we found out the police chief had been suspended. I can say that it's probably been the most horrible experience of my life, <laughs> certainly of my political life. Really difficult. Very difficult, because it was uh, passions ran very high. There was a lot of information that uh, we were privy to that uh, we couldn't share. Uh, the media, not this media, but that media, uh, created a, sens a sensationalist approach to it. And uh, it generated just a lot of, of ugliness. And um, we're volunteers, you know, we're just kind of common folk in the middle of a media storm and, a, and of a personnel issue, which frankly should have been held all behind closed doors. It was all very private stuff that, it, that got out in the public. So. It was really hard, and I'm sure we were. I'm sure it was fascinating. I've heard that from a lot of constituents that they watched it on TV. And but I, I have great faith that people, when given the right information and when they understand the issues, make the right decisions and are capable of that. So I see now as we're in this budget process and we've got these people in the community helping us, working with the city council, shows that it's like everybody's like, okay, now we got to fix it. Now we have to fix it. There's no. You know, we could, uh, you can blame this one, you can blame that one, you can do whatever, but the fact of the matter is we're a little city that grew really fast and we're really complicated. And people will be able to watch it all on Channel 17. People can watch it on Channel 17. I hope now that we're fixing it and we're all going to be so boring, people will still be interested in watching us. I mean, that's really the, but I think that's the good news. But we're, we really were the top most rated, I'm sure. Absolutely, because we can count now on the website. Hundreds, hundreds of people watch your meetings this summer. So that's also the thing I want to let people know is that um, you can watch these meetings online and you can watch them agenda item by agenda item, clickable agendas. And I hope people do. I, I, people need to continue to do that. We're, everybody knows we're, we're going through really hard economic times and, you know, five of your local people don't know the answers any more than anybody else does. But I, I think if we get collectively, uh, we're going to be just fine. So thank you so much. Thank you.
Happy holidays. So um, we're going to continue our coverage. I've got Oak Lo Galbo. Oak used to work here at CCTV. Sure did. And now you run your very own community access channel in right. Richmond. Well, it's not mine, but yeah, no, I do run the community access channel in Richmond, Jericho Underhill. And what kind of programs do you run there? Well, uh, really the whole gamut, all sorts of things. Of course, we do meetings, um, town meetings, and uh, things we get from the state. We have uh, music from the farmers market. We have local, you know, events, uh, the high school um, concerts. We get other uh, programs from other access channels that people have requested. Some religious program, the Catholic Mass. So, so you're pretty busy. Oh yeah. And you recently moved your location. Yes, we moved down into Richmond Village, which is great because we're much more visible and we have more interaction with the public there and uh, it's better for us who work there <laughs> to be involved in the community more because we were out at the end in Jonesville for a long time. And looking forward, um, what's your hope for public access as we move forward into the future? Well, I certainly hope we continue in, in to exist, one, and uh, I would really love it if we could actually be carried in more formats. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we were actually on the satellite dish as well, or just in, on every possible format, uh, streaming, being able to interact on the internet, and um, maybe even more live remote type of things going on so that we could be out in the community more whenever that's possible. Well, it, many of us are going into negotiations with Comcast. You're in negotiations now with Comcast. Yes, we are. And people need to know that the more support that they can show for their community access channels, the more opportunity we have to continue to operate them. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as we put on something, say there's a uh, election debate, there's a big issue around our bridge, and we covered it, all the meetings, people are calling and they're thanking us because they can't get to the meetings. You know, so you, and I also noticed that, like, Richmond board watches Jericho's board and vice versa, and on how they watch each other to learn from each other, and because we're all, all contiguous towns as well, so that's great. It's like facilitating some, you know, community um, services. And knowledge. And knowledge, yeah. Thank you, and thanks for all you do. Thank you, LG. Happy Thank holidays. Congratulations, 25 thanks. years. I know, 25 years. Hard to imagine. So um, we have Averill here. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. So you're a community producer here at Channel 17, are you? Yes. And you know, we're giving you a special award tonight as a live show producer. Averill runs the cameras and uh, gets behind the... Have you done the directing yet? Yes, I have. You have? Mm -hmm. So what do you like best about working here? I really like everything about it. It's just so fun to work the cameras and direct. It's, I just like it, everything here. And um, tell me a little bit about your, the school you go to. And well, I go to Hunt Middle School and I, um, it's just like a regular middle school. We have uh, math. How can, how can you be sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> and how did you find your way to Channel 17? Well, my mom was coming over here to pick something up for I don't know what reason for, but she came over here and Sam, who um, is, she's in so, um, somewhere, uh, she, uh, she said that she needed volunteers and my mom knew that I liked camera working in and stuff, so she, um, she recommended me and then she told me about it and then, she, then I, I thought it was a great idea and yeah, I j just started joining like a few months ago. Well, we're so glad that you come and help us, Avril. It's really wonderful. And um, if you were to tell the people out there why they should continue to support public access, what would you say to them? Well, I think I would say you should never stop contributing because you don't know if you're going to be like thanked back it's because I don't know, just like stuff. That would be good. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yep, me too. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, oh, we've got, we've got Richard Kemp, who's actually Mr. February in the upcoming CCTV calendar. I uh, need to change my outfit. Uh, do I have to do this in a, with a bathing suit or what? What's, what's no, actually, the picture's already taken. It's of you and Will Miller. 
Oh, whoa. Many well, years ago, and under your arm you have Stop Apartheid. <laughs> and I just well, could... We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that you are an effective community organizer from way back. Why do you support public access? Well, because I think it just kind of helps with the democracy that people can see what governments are doing uh, with their money and, and ideas and stuff. And it's a very important function that um, public access plays in the communities in the state of Vermont and probably around the country too, I, I believe, right? Absolutely. And I'm going to just use this as an opportunity to um, give a little plug for membership to CCTV. And um, this year we're going to be offering, a, we're starting a new membership campaign, mm -hmm. which you knew about. Yes, I did know about that. And I'm a member. Yes, you a are. A card-carrying member. That's right. <laughs> and Richard is also on the CCTV board. And um, as a benefit for our members, we're going to be having this calendar that we're producing of high points from the last 25 years. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting. There's a connection. I, I'm... I market uh, Afro-American calendars near the end of the year and the first part of uh, the next year. So it would be a nice calendar to see. Be looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. So um, would you do me a favor and um, maybe tell Rob that that video that is running right now is we're going to need to run here on the air. Oh, okay. In about five minutes. Right. So just let um, Rob know that. Do you see him? He's oh, right there in front of that camera. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, hi, how are you? Are you coming to be interviewed? Tell me your name. Brooke. Brooke? Mm -hmm. How come you're here tonight? Uh, because my sister volunteers here and I'm just... Oh, is April your sister? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it's, it looks like she likes it pretty well, huh? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. What kind of things do you like to do? Um, I like to draw. I like to, um, I don't know. Do you ever watch TV? Um, yeah. <laughs> do you ever watch public access? Sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes you do. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's in your mix. Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Bye. So, Terry, how are you doing? Hi. Terry's one of our community producers, too. You have a regular show, don't you? Yes, I produce uh, Vermont Today over on Channel 15, VCAM. And we have a really interesting show this, that just started this week with uh, Thomas Naylor. It's an hour and a half interview, and we talk about his new book and about uh, the possibility of secession of Vermont and an independent republic. And I also produce a show here on uh, Channel 17 called uh, Progressive Thought. Uh, we had a, an interesting show um, uh, last week and uh, that people called in, and we talked about the upcoming elections in March. Um, they're talking about uh, running me for um, progressive candidate on the city council. And so I'm thinking about that now. Maybe we'll talk about that on our next uh, show. Until the election guidelines kick in, and then you can only talk in a forum. Well, that's on Channel 17, but on Channel 15... You can talk all you want. Yeah, the rules are different. That's right. Why do you think public access is important? Well, for instance, uh, uh, the, the cost of a political campaign is, uh, is becoming uh, uh, enormous. Um, uh, Barack Obama spent something like $50 million on his campaign. And to run for the Senate in, uh, in Vermont costs about $5 million. Actually, he spent $500 million. Okay, ten times as much as I thought. Yeah. So I don't have the $500 million, but with public access TV, I can uh, get my message out to Burlington, and if I run for the city council, I'll have an opportunity to reach the voters with my ideas uh, on both uh, Channel 17 and Channel 15. So I think they're very important. Thank you so much. Thanks for your work. Thank you. All right, so you know we have a couple of awards here to give out, and um, I'm just going to recognize these folks because I'm not sure they're here, and um, they may not be here, but they're worth recognizing. And one is the Vermont Worker Center, and the Vermont Worker Center does a lot with community media. This is my camera. There you go, and they actually produce a lot of programs and um, are working recently on health care. They produce a program here at Channel 17, and they actually have been showing it in different forums as a way to influence policy. So we wanted to applaud the Vermont Worker Center for really using community media in its fullest sense, and we're pretty excited about that. Also, um, another person that we wanted to recognize is Sandy Baird, who's been doing commentary here for many years, and uh, from the beginning, you know, more than 20 years, she's been doing short commentaries and deserves real recognition for her 
diligence in getting that done. And then um, Henry Prine, I'm not sure that Henry Prine is here, but Henry Prine along with Averill are two youngest community producers and they run the live shows on uh, Wednesday nights, I think that is. And uh, Henry is just an all-purpose person and he's, you know, ultimately Henry's gonna be running Channel 17, so he's definitely somebody to keep your eye on. And then um, Jessica Tanner, I'm not sure if she's actually still here either, hello. And uh, she's a community producer and has been working She's just always here editing. Um, it's sort of the endless editing job, but she's doing some great programs that we wanted to make sure everybody understood about. And then James Giroux, is James Giroux here still? Rob, he left. Um, James Giroux is, um, does a regular show every week. This man comes in and produces something, and it's just, just phenomenal, the amount of programming that he puts out. And, um, if he were here, he would talk about how important and valuable it is for um, him to be connected to the community through this community media. And then um, we also wanted to recognize two of our um, two organizations that have been using Access a lot and um, community media quite a bit, and that's Mercy Connections and um, Champlain Valley C Office of Economic Opportunity or Community Action. And uh, they're both really worth noting in terms of what it is that they do. Now, um, I'm just going to ask here, I think we want to show this video. Rob, this is what you call sort of a dead, a dead zone. Do we have the video to show? We have the video to show. All right. So Tuya's giving me the thumbs up. And we're going to show um, a, a little compilation that Nat Ayers put together. And he put it together from our 15,000 hours of archives. And I just wanted folks to know that we're going to be doing a monthly show the first Tuesday of every month. We're going to be doing CCTV Rewind and go back into our archives. On the 30th of April, we're going to have a community screening where we spend um, two or three hours down at the Main Street Landing Theater watching our footage. And then on the 13th of June, we're going to be having a 25th anniversary extravaganza celebration at the Boathouse. So you stay tuned to all of those things. Um, we have a calendar. It's up on our website, cctv.org. And um, we hope that you join us. Stella Rose Johnson, The Next Generation. How are Hi, you? I'm good. Why do you think public access TV is important? I don't know. Well, there you go. Why should she? She's my child. So we're going to just run to some video, and uh, we're going to go from there. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching, and thanks for supporting us for all these many, many years. Can you tell me what you're doing here? Well, we're selling uh, gliders in the, uh, whatever this mall is. <laughs> the uh, University Mall, I guess. We do this, we travel around the different states, New England and uh, East Coast areas and sell gliders for 11 day shows. It's so you've been here for 11 days? Uh, 10 days, tomorrow's the last day, which will be Sunday. Where are you heading next? Connecticut. Enfield, Connecticut. So people who didn't get a chance to get one here, they have nowhere to get them. They just come right down there. Saturday or Sunday, we'll be there. How, how many hours a day do you do this? Well, pretty much small hours. So from about 10 o'clock in the morning till 9 at night. And it gets to be a long day. <laughs> it's just, a, you know, you get used to it. I don't know how, but it happens. How long have you been doing this for? I've been doing it since July, and he's been doing it for about two and a half years. So I'm going to do it up till Christmas and see how that goes. Christmas is supposed to be a pretty big time to sell, so looking forward to that. More or less, it's a uh, consignment. I pay for the goods after they're sold. Yeah. Where were you just before you were in Burlington? We were down in Hanover. Yeah, no, Hanover, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. It's just south of Boston. And where are you headed next? We're headed to uh, Enfield, Connecticut. Where do you end up in this in the winter time? <laughs> Key West. <laughs>
<laughs> no, you mean for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, Raleigh, North Carolina. Is that, is that where you live or that's where you sell? That's where I'm going to be selling these, yeah. Big mall there. So where are you guys both from? We're from Iowa. How often do you get home? About once or twice a year. You go all the way from like uh, Key West, Florida out to Iowa? Uh, no, we'd probably be closer maybe towards Washington, D.C. before we'd ever think about going home or New York, somewhere. Um, we bought a couple of these yesterday and love them, but one did break, so how do I fix it? You can fix it with tape or Elmer's glue, either one. We tried uh, super glue and that seemed to melt it. Yeah, that will melt it. Try to use a softer glue like Elmer's glue, but tape is probably your best bet. Okay. Um, and I also noticed they seem to fly a lot better in the mall than they do outside. Well, that's it. I mean, most people uh, don't have a mall at home, so. Seventy one, I stopped. When did uh, the talk shows start? Well, that started when I was in Wilmington, Delaware, with a guy who originated the telephone talk shows, Joe Pine, the late Joe Pine. Now, I remember Joe Pine. Sure. Well, Joe Pine was a pal of mine. He was from Marcus Hook, Chester, Pennsylvania. Started the talk show on WILM in Wilmington, Delaware. And when uh, and I used to listen in and sit in kind of with him some nights, and when he went on vacation, I did the show. And so that's really how I got started with it. And I came back here. In 1954, when WDOT went on the air, and I did a program called It's Your Nickel, because it cost a nickel to make a phone call. So that was the way I, people would call, and I'd say, go ahead, it's your nickel. And that's, and so I've been doing them ever since. peaceful Vermont, where the citizens have more time for life's common courtesies, or so we thought. I'm not apologizing to you at all. His mission? To improve American public opinion of the increasingly unpopular South African government. But soon, after he hit the airwaves, protesters demonstrating his appearance hit the pavement, almost underneath the wheels of the car Duke Kent Brown was driving. With one lurch of his Lincoln, Kent Brown effectively poured gasoline on the very public opinion inferno he was supposed to extinguish. Only two people suffered minor injuries, but American-South African relations in Burlington seemed to be dealt another crippling blow. This was a legitimate international incident involving a representative of a government from another continent, from Africa. It was something special, a rare treat. Right. Um. Oh, wow, look at that. See how big their jaw gets? They can stretch it and dislocate it. It's amazing. Where do I see the cool mouse? Daddy! <laughs> the mouse is dead, don't worry. look 
too appetizing, eh? You wanna go play with computers? I do. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that, huh? <laughs> well, and now it's gonna look like a cigarette any second because the, the tail stays sticking out. It's pretty funny. Okay. When you've done seen it a lot, I guess you can see humor in it. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's an alien invasion, but don't panic. The Montreal storytellers are coming down on Monday, the 13th of July, to the Fletcher Free Library at 7.30 p.m. It costs $3 to see these aliens descending from the wind-blasted, frozen tundra of the north. They're going to tell us hypermodern stories for the post-TV age. You may be wondering why I'm lying like this, why I'm talking to you like this. If you come, I'll explain everything. Thank you. Homeowners, is your boiler on the blink? Does your roof leak? The Burlington Home Improvement Program provides low and no interest loans for these and other repairs. If you're a low to moderate income homeowner in the Old North End, King Street, Lakeside, or Chase Street neighborhoods, you can get additional information about the Home Improvement Program by contacting the Community and Economic Development Office at City Hall, 658-9300, extension 197. I know, we will, we'll get to that, all right. We can, he gets uh, boring looking at us, that's yeah. what they say. He can well, only look at him. I know, I know, he does that very nicely, but why don't you, I mean, if you want to film them for a while, 
Okay. I'll stop. You know, but he gets his name in the free press. It's all over. That's right. Now he's a dog with ego. He thinks he's a great artist. All kinds of. All kinds of <laughs> Let's put the camera on this guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a half. I didn't film that old I mean, we're trying to make this man into a yeah. household word. We have <laughs> people that know who he is.